Hi everybody. Um, I wanted to do, I promised I'd do a uh, video on Alvipora and Ganepora, aka flowerpot corals. I guess that's what everybody's used to calling them. That's what I call them. Um, I've been keeping these for several years and I've learned plenty of tricks and tips and I'd like to pass them on because they're very beautiful and I hope to help other people. I struggled in the beginning myself so I want to pass on what I learned and what helps me keep these beautiful corals. Alright, so I'm going to take, show you this one is the oldest one I've had. I've had this maybe six years. Um, I got It was two little bitty frags, little bitty tiny frags, maybe an inch frag. There are two of them now. Um, I got two of them together, really small, and I glued them on this rock and the skeleton now is encrusted all over the rock so you can't, I can't break it free if I wanted to. And this one is a red, it was a red aura, gonna pour, pour it at a um, local fish store and he fragged his and it was huge, the one he had was huge and he fragged it and I got two small little frags out of it. And so it's red, and I don't know if you can see it from the video, but it's red with, it has a blue center in the center of the flower. And, um, and this one is just a break, just a plain purple, kind of pour a, um, and then I have an alveopora over here. And this is an Australian alveopora. And you can definitely see the difference, um, in the, the flowers. There's, I think there's like 12, so to speak, petals, as opposed to 24 on the Ganipora. So, um, again, I've had this one for about six years, maybe seven. Um, this one I've had probably four or five years. Um, and this one, um, I came home one time from vacation and one of my wrasses had knocked it, turned it over on its head. And so half the skeleton had died. So I was like, I thought the whole thing was dead, but you could still see the flowers and the little bitty holes in the skeleton. So I just cut off the excess part that um, died and thought, well, see what happens. And I glued it back down on its rock and it lived, it, you know, I it couldn't believe it. And that was a couple years ago and now it's like back, looks back to how it was normal. Um, so, um, the secret to Ghani's, they like flow, not a lot of flow. I have my uh, MP40s, you know, set at, um, you know, uh, the uh, tidal swell kind of mode where they, you know, where it's like, well, it's, basically, it's not tidal swell, but it's like the kind of, you know, mode that's found in nature. You know, it's just kind of ramps up and ramps down. So they just, they just like, you know, I'd say medium flow. Um, the key, also, the, the, the thing that, this is the big key. I grow my own phytoplankton, so I dump a uh, 16 ounce bottle of phytoplankton every other day in the tank and in nature flower pot corals feed almost exclusively on phytoplankton in the ocean so once I figured that out I've never had trouble keeping them again because that's really all that's really their main food source you know trying to feed them you know reef roids or I mean or anything like that they, their mouths are too small and um, once I started growing my own phytoplankton and dumping phytoplankton in every other day, and for this size tank I do a 16 ounce bottle, you know, you could obviously do much less if you have a smaller tank, is the, the key. Um, and another key too, when you, you know, check out when you go to your local fish store and you see a specimen, make sure that it's out, um, you want it to be out, this back here. Is a little baby frag that I got several. I don't. I don't know why it's taking forever. They, they are slow growers, so keep that in mind. Um, but if you buy one, just make sure they're you know everything's out. Make sure the skeleton's not broken or you know make sure it doesn't have any kind of disease or any kind of um, anything wrong with it. You know, acclimate it to your tank like normal. I just float mine and, and put them in. You know. Um, they do really good and angelfish and stuff they don't seem to bother them you know I've never had an issue 
them bothering the flower pot, thank God, because I really would hate for that one to get bothered. That's my uh, prize coral. But um, yeah, the biggest key to your flower pot is going to be uh, phytoplankton, phytoplankton, phytoplankton. I can't say that enough. So, and the cheapest thing to do is to grow your own phytoplankton. It's it's not not hard at all. You, you just have to buy. Um, you ha you need to buy from some place like I buy mine from Mercer or Montana. They um, have one strain. You have to buy one strain if you try to buy anything from the store like docs or, or I don't know, echo, you know, aqua edibles or something, they mix strains. So they have like three or four strains of phytoplankton in the bottle. And when you do that, you can't grow your own that way. So you, they, they, you won't be able to grow it yourself. Um, so anyway, I buy um, one, that, you know, from Hannah, Montana, I buy, um, or excuse me, Mercer, Mercer of Montana, I buy one bottle of phytoplankton from them and then I just pour it into a, like a 32 ounce I pour, pour that bottle into you know a large or excuse me 64 ounce jug which fills it up about almost halfway I fill the other half up with salt water at a salinity of about 19 18 something like that put an air stone in it um, put some fertilizer in it I buy the f2 fertilizer uh, put that in put a couple drops of that in it and away you go and every week I harvest it and you do it all over again You take out half put, put salt water in and I'll do another video if anybody would like me to do one on How I, how my method is anyway for growing plankton? Um, and that's the key. I mean I turn the skimmer off for 30 minutes when I put the plankton in otherwise the skimmer will skim it right back out So that's important um but that's about it. Um, other than that, I've had really good success again with adding. I mean, I've, in the beginning, I lost plenty of flower pot corals. It was sad. You know, they do all right for a few months and then slowly stop coming out and just withering away. And I think that was because they weren't getting any. They weren't getting food. You know, they can't catch food. Like when you feed, I feed my tank mice. You know, when you see these, you know, uh, euphilia type corals. You know, your torches. You know. Um, hammers and stuff like that they can catch food you know they can catch mice on their own bubble corals you know they can do all that on their own and um, and stuff but the flower pot cannot so um, the, the phytoplankton's a, the, the definitely the key guys to keeping um, flower pot corals definitely the key um, and if, if you can, it, it is good to get the Aura flower pot coral frags. Um, frags are always good. Again, they're slower grower, you know, they grow kind of slow. But they're definitely, um, definitely good. So, um, but that's about it as far as that goes. If anybody has any questions or you want me to, to add more to my video or anything like that, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer questions or add more to the video. Um... Or if you have any, you know, anything you want me to, even any kind of tutorial or anything you guys want me to bring up or, or discuss, um, you know, and in all these years of doing this, you, you do learn a lot. You make mistakes, unfortunately, and it's definitely costly mistakes in this hobby, but you do learn from it, and it's always good to help fellow people out so hopefully they can not make the same mistakes you did. You know what I mean? It's very helpful. So, um... You know, I'll be more than happy to answer anybody's question. Um, so, um, definitely answer anybody's question on the flower pots because you can definitely have success with them. You know, and and stuff definitely, and they, and they'll definitely grow for you and do really well. Um, I mean, they're beautiful corals, so. I would love to help anybody that has any questions or whatever, so please like my video. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to ask, or if you want me to do a video on something else you see in the tank that you might want me to do a video on, uh, about anything, anything at all, just ask. It's great. I'd love to help anybody that wants help. Um, and please share my video if you like it, or subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again, everybody, for everybody's support. 
it means a lot to me to you know have people watch my videos and, and comment and I take every comment and read it for sure and I'll respond if a uh, response is uh, necessary that's no problem at all I'm just here to help so that everybody can enjoy a piece of the ocean and reef in your own home which is what our goal is so thanks again everybody for um, watching my video and if I can offer any more um, guidance let me know uh, one more thing is too as far as water quality goes they seem to thrive they, they like they like a little dirtier water if you have a super clean no, low nutrient tank they would not do as well in there even if you add phytoplankton so they like um, like if you keep for example you know if you keep euphilia species torches hammers frog spawn um, they like the water a little dirtier too not zero nitrates not zero phosphates you know my nitrates stay around 10 phosphates are less you know usually you know 0.25 or less I have to keep that definitely have to keep that for my stony corals that I'm just gotten into about a year or two ago so um, but other than that you know to, if you have a mixed reef like I do you have to kind of you know because stony corals yeah they probably would like the, they do like a little bit of nitrates and stuff but I you know 10 seems to be okay any more than that they start to brown out so I keep mine around 10 I don't have a problem doing that with the algae scrubber um, you know and if you try to do low nutrients your you, your LPS coral suffer for that in my opinion and in, in my experience um, so um, but anyway, if anybody has any questions at all, uh, like I said, I'll be happy to answer them. I'm always happy to help people. I definitely understand how uh, tough this hobby is, especially when just getting started, and especially when you start getting fish that are a little di difficult, like leopard wrasses, um, bigger angelfish can be difficult. Tanks can even be difficult, depending on the kind. So anything anybody wants to ask uh, feel free again like my video share my video um, if you know other people that are getting into the hobby and I would I definitely appreciate I uh, do appreciate everybody's support that comes on here and watches my video it means a lot to me and thank you so much